Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. We're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. This is yet another exciting package, I can guarantee you. Today we're going to be talking about basketball. And um, yeah, you know, we've been oscillating between basketball and football mostly on this program. And some of us, some of you have said, you know, why don't you widen the net? We're going to do so. Sometimes it's a question of, you know, whether you find the right resource people to talk to. Now, if you know anybody who is in athletics or who is in wrestling or boxing or any one of the popular sports that wants a platform to promote the sport that they're, they're building or a sports asset that they're managing, we'll be very happy to give them this platform as long as that asset or property or sport promotes local industry. So today we're going to be talking about basketball. Basketball is easily the second most popular sport in Nigeria. So people, you know, one would wonder, why is basketball still struggling? Why is it, it has huge commercial, you know, uh, prospects, some would argue, but why is this still struggling? On the one hand, sports generally in the local um, uh, economy, all sports are suffering. Even football, that's the runaway um, number one, the most popular sport in Nigeria, is suffering domestically. And I'm speaking here about you know, the Nigeria Premier Football League and the other, the other uh, leagues in the structure, like the NNL and the NLO, which are the second and the third tiers of um, the Nigerian Football Leagues. Yeah? So basketball is you know, basically suffering, suffering the same uh, problems. But can basketball, for instance, be um, a leading light? Can basketball, you know, lead the way uh, into a new era of commercially successful domestic sports? Today, I have a resource person who's going to be joining us from the United States, and he is one who should know for a variety of reasons. Number one, he is an ex-international player for Nigeria, a power forward for the, the Tigers in his time. That's number one. So he's played the game, he understands the game. Number two, he is the head of the sponsorship and marketing committee, committee of the Nigeria uh, Basketball Federation. So he is the man who is charged with ensuring that you know, we can make basketball a commercially successful um, um, sport in Nigeria, at least at the MBBF. And then number three, he's also personally involved in um, the sports business. He's the CEO of AFA Sports um, Limited. And uh, AFA Sports produces um, you know, sports apparel for you know, sports kits for national teams and uh, for players, for sports people. And then you know, it's not just the apparel, they do, they, do, um, boot, they do boots, they do tracks, they do all kinds of stuff. He's going to tell you about that himself in the course of the program. All right? So he knows. The question is, how do we get out of him what we should to ensure that you, the, the viewer, you know, get to understand the game more and how you can plug your own, uh, you can plug into the, biz the business of basketball in Nigeria, you know, and generally create uh, some sort of um, income stream for yourself or your friends. As is the, you know, culture of this program, we're going to go on a short break, a one minute break, so that I give you a bit of time for you to settle in to this program for the next 45 minutes. And you might inv you know, um, invite a friend of yours or two to join you in, you know, in what is going to be uh, discussed in this program. So when we return, the business begins. Don't go away. Hello, welcome back to the program Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. Now, joining me from the United States will be, is Mr. Ugo Udezwe. Mr. Ugo Udezwe, right? Uh, he's the CEO of AFA Sports, and um, he's the chairman of the Marketing and Sponsorship Committee of the MBBF as well as, you know, a former international for Nigeria. You know. So hello, Ugo. You're welcome to the program, Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Okay. Ugo, 
basketball is is um, struggling in Nigeria. You know, but it is clearly a sport that has huge huge potential, not just from for for its entertainment um, um, quality, but for for the commerce that we know it can bring to the table. Basketball is also very, very popular in Nigeria. It's the second most popular sport in this country. Um, so what is, what is going on? What, what are the steps that we need to start uh, thinking of taking now to, you know, to try and move basketball from where it is now to become you know, a more uh, successful sport, especially commercially in Nigeria? Thanks for having me and those are amazing questions. Okay. Um, first of all, everything is struggling in Nigeria right now. Mm. <laughs> so not just basketball. Mm. Um, but I think that uh, for the sports, you know, when we, um, when we uh, have the Continental Basketball League uh, about five years ago, it was successful. And I think the most important thing is for the government and the Nigerian Basketball Federation to create an enabling environment for the business to try, the business of basketball. And when I talk about the business of basketball, I think there has to be a mind shift from entitlements, from people that think it's always government that has to provide or the federation. You know, to run a league is not, even the Basketball African League that's going on, it's a year round thing. You know, it, the federation is not equipped to run basketball leagues the uh whether it's football basketball or anybody you know in most developed countries usa canada europe the top leagues you hear of are not run by uh, the country's federations they're run by private enterprise and i think this is where people need to be hungry if they really want to see basketball grow they have to find a way to invest in it they have to find a way to it's you know it's an entertainment it's business i think we've gone so far away from the shift where uh, nigerian basketball federation should be um providing a basketball league in nigeria it's a business opportunity you know for the nba to come to africa they see that opportunity and they spend money and i think our own people need to come up stand up private individuals that see the opportunity and spend their money and I think the business will cascade all the way to the grassroots if we're able to be successful doing that. So our job as the Federation is to be an enabler, you know, and try and get people to understand that this is what needs to be done. You are a member of the Federation, yeah? And you have identified yes. the fact that the way to go is to say, you know what, let's bring in the private sector. I actually quite like the fact that you know that you know, we can't overburden government at this point in time. You know, the excuse that government has to come and do, you know, to help us lift sports is, is, is becoming a bit tiring, right? So maybe we need to get the private sector in. But then you are, you know, in the M MBBF board, right? What I would like to know is, what steps are you taking right now to try and, you know, get the private sector to come on board, especially given your role as the head of the marketing and sponsorship wing of the organization? When we when we when we did the uh, the uh, Continental Basketball League, there was no enabling environment. In fact, the MBB board at the time shut us down. Mm. Um, but what you notice now is there's a lot of private individuals that have done basketball uh, events and they're encouraged. Um, I think for us, it's just to keep sounding out to people that you know the expectation of people to understand that oh you know try keep talking to people that want to keep talking to people that want to be part of what we're trying to do so they can understand that this is something that's you know it's a real business opportunity okay so let me let me see if i understand you well right like if a group of investors approach you now and say you know what we want to organize a a league you know maybe a super league in Nigeria, for instance, um, would the federation be disposed to that? And if the, even if the federation is disposed to that, would the would the football industry, you know, the leadership of football, sorry, the leadership of basketball in Nigeria, be disposed to that? You know, 
hundred percent. They don't even need to. Our job is to see if some people come into town. There are a lot of people that are doing everything in basketball. You know, I myself have invested in. A, I'm a founder of the Alpha Sports brand, mm. and there's a lot of individuals that um, Weber basketball and a lot of things. You know, it, it's an open platform. Anybody mm. can start a league anytime. The only thing is the federation will not will do. If somebody comes today and wants to start a basketball league. We'll do everything we can to help promote them. We'll do everything we can to make sure they were not, they had all the opportunities to encourage them to get it done. You know, because having a basketball league is not, uh, I think people minimize it and the hard work that goes behind it. When we did the Continental Basketball League, we had to hire staff every day. We had to, sometimes we were in the offices for eight hours straight. Hmm. It's not people always see, like, for example, if you walk, go watch BAL, it takes about uh, six months a year to put together an event like that consistently. Hmm. So it's not an easy process. But I think it's one that is encouraging and one that can be done because, you know, the Nigerian economy, the human capital in Nigeria sustains it very clearly. Hmm. So I think it's something that... You know, but another thing that we have to be aware of that is also helps the development of sports. There has to be a strong, a strong middle class in the environment that sports is operating because it depends on its fans, and there has to be, um, you know, there has to be safe and a safe environment. People, sports is an entertainment, so people have to be there to have fun. People have to come out there with a good feel. You know, it doesn't have to be too abrasive. It doesn't have to be um, fearful for your life or going through a stadium where you don't know where you're, you're parking your car and all that stuff. So it's also on us as the Federation to make sure those enabling environments work for that person to grow the game of basketball. We reach out to people all the time. We try to encourage people to do this. And we ourselves, even in my own capacity, as a businessman, I'm working on bringing back a, a, a private basketball league myself. Okay. The, you know, um, let's look at the game. It's a popular game in Nigeria. You know, the one story I always tell people is that I served in Joss. And what, what used to, uh, to amaze me back then was that um, when, for a while I was in Unijoss at the time, you know, but in the evening, People went out, my, my friends all went out to play basketball the way we go to play football in, in the South, you know. So it's a game that has um, a, a national spread. How do we begin to develop the game, you know, uh, if, if we want it to be popular, if we want it to be, to be how do I put it, if we want it to become a, a part of our lives, yeah, how do we begin to manage the game? Do we, do we start from elementary schools? Do we start from secondary schools? Do we start from university basketball? Or do we create a platform at the very top um, that is like a premier division that then inspires growth across the different parts of the industry? It's, in, it's interesting that you mentioned all these levels of elementary, university, college, because all these levels have business opportunities and incentives for an investor. Yeah. Like in the United States, you have the AAU system, yeah. which is the gratuitous of basketball in the United States. It's completely private and yeah. it's a billion dollar business. Yeah. You know, I look at people like um, um, Akofa League, Mr. Fanny, that does the Akofa League in Lagos. That's an interest, that's something he has been doing as an enterprise for over 10 years and even in a small space is operating and imagine if some people have the courage to do that in a larger scale you know we talk about even in the united states you have university games you have the nca the nca is a private league it's not owned by united states basketball federation it's a completely private league mm. so i think people have to see this opportunity so even all the way to the NBA or the professional, if you go to Europe, the same thing happens. You know, I think we have to find ways to understand that at all level of development of basketball or sports, from the grassroots to the top, 
has some business opportunity for individuals. It's not just the government. The government is just there to provide an enabling environment. The government is there to focus on the national teams and how it's run and the regulations and the controls around it, making sure everything is done right. I don't think the government or the federations are in any way equipped for these questions. I think we have to educate people more, or just like in Nigeria, as it happens, when one person starts it and people see the success, everybody else will jump into it. But I think at this point, we don't have the mind shift yet to understand that this is a business opportunity. And I understand that it's a new playing ground for all of us, but I think we have to be more aggressive. I think we have to more educate people that instead of waiting for government to build leagues, instead of waiting for the next generation, that they are, this is something, if you provide the entertainment and the opportunity, just like music, people will come and watch it. Okay, so Ugo, I'll come back again to you on, on that, because I, I find that that's a, a very excellent um, perspective. You know, we need to be more bullish. We need to push this thing out there and get people to see the business um, in sports. But then again, back to you, that's your desk. Uh, the thing is, as marketing and sponsorship head, uh, have you had like, uh, have you tried uh, to have like um, business sessions? Um, with, with the investing community in Nigeria, for instance, uh, as, as the MBBF or as the basketball community, you, you, you dedicate maybe like a, a day or two to, to educating the, the, the investment community on the business um, potential of sports, especially basketball. Uh, have you done that? And if you have done it, what sort of response, what sort of um, 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 response did you get from the investment community? Well, to be completely transparent, this my, um, our main focus moving forward is this particular thing you've discussed. Mm. Our main focus is reaching out to the right individuals. Mm. You know, but Nigeria comes with a lot of challenges. Mm. You know, when we did the Continental Basketball League, um, which I still, which people arguably say is the best basketball league they've ever had in Nigeria, mm. I think, you know, when the Federation at the time was trying everything he can to stop us from being successful a lot of people did not stand up for that league mm. a lot of people kept quiet mm. nobody came up and spoke against what the federation was doing and then you know i think not just getting people to understand the mind shifts like you said there has to be education on it mm. people just can't sit back and wait for the federation every year so we have a job cut out for us. Mm. And I think what you're proposing is an excellent idea. Mm. You know, to have seminars, opportunities, sit mm. down with people, try and show them the op opportunity, try, mm. try and show the the return on invest, possible return on investment in an endeavor like that. So mm. I agree with you completely. I think we have to do a better job. I think mm. we have to do a better job reaching out to different individuals and trying to create these things on our own. I agree with you 100%. Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so let's even talk about ABL. You know, you guys, you and, you, you, you got, you, you and your team, you put together ABL. Um, and here's my, my, my question. Why, why did you think about a continental uh, tournament? Uh, why didn't you just think about doing a local um, competition that, that I imagine would have cost less and probably be more sustainable? and um, would have had probably the sponsors a lot more focused on the property because maybe Nigeria is their, is their area of, of um, operations uh, solely. So why, why did you choose to do ABL first? So, so you understand the ABL um, was, the mindset behind the ABL was a lot different as it is now. Okay. You know, the MB ABL was looked at, it was, there was nothing like the ABL when we came into that space. Okay. And when we came into that space, we could have done only Nigeria, but we saw an opportunity across Africa. Mm. So, by the way, the ABL was successful in many ways until it was scuttled by um, the Federation at that time. They wrote out, the ABL at its heyday had over 20 sponsors. 
Wow. Um, we had Asky Airlines as a partner. We had a lot of even in, um, continental brands as sponsors. The Federation at the time were writing our sponsors, calling us an illegal league, and panicked our sponsors, so our sponsors pulled out. That's why the ABL essentially did not succeed. Hmm. There was an aggressive mindset by the Federation at the time, for whatever reason, to make sure that the ABL was not successful. Okay. And the yeah. same people that are, were part of the Federation now are the people still crying there's no basketball league in Nigeria. <laughs> but I agree with you. You know, in our mindset at that time, we were thinking about the commercial enterprise and the opportunities in an intercontinental basketball league. Mm. And I agree with you, but there's still an opportunity for there's still an opportunity for a national basketball league, which I even think has a more viable opportunity. And this is our focus right now. And okay. our focus, if we ever, 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 if we ever get a chance to replicate that again, you know, and because of the current economic climate, definitely a national league is what will be the focus. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I'm happy that you know that, you know, Nigeria, I, I mean, and this is a, uh, something that I, tend, I think that we need to take a deeper look at um, in this part of the world. If I, Nigeria, you know, I had an experience once when I did a, an African uh, football website. And the, and, and the one lesson I got from that was the fact that, you know, Africans still in, in, in large numbers, uh, in large percentages, still think first about their own before they think, you know, um, continental. Even though the general picture is to talk about Africa as one, as one family, you know, but we still think um, locally. So th that's 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 aside. Let's come back to um, the MBBF. You said that when you came up with the ABL, which was a perfectly good good um, um, idea, the, the 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 MBBF leadership at the time fought you. So now I'm an investor, I'm watching this program, I'm thinking, oh, I just had to go say that, you know, the MBBF would, would uh, welcome any, any um, investors. But then I've also had to go say that when he, he and his partners got in, they were fought by the same MBBF. Please, can you clear that up for us? Is it, I know that maybe the, okay, so maybe the current administration might be a lot more friendly to investors. What if the next administration is not? You know, if I'm a confused investor, what do you tell me? I, I think this is what I tell you. Doing business in Nigeria is not for the... Uh, okay. Nigeria is a high return and high opportunity space to do business with. Yeah. And it's not for the... Uh, Faint hearted. <laughs> look at what's happening to... Look, look, look at what's happening to... Uh, uh, at the refineries and Dankote and the rest of them. Mm. Nigeria, we, we, uh, Nigeria is not, uh, but he, he, if I was to do it again, you know, when I came to Nigeria the, at the time for the basketball league, I was a little naive. I did not understand the market space. Anybody that is doing business in Nigeria has to be courageous and understand the market space and how to navigate the politics and how to understand how to navigate the enterprise and the people. Nigeria is an excellent place to do business. And I'm not getting the government uh, a pass on this. We have to do better. We have to create, you know, create sustainable. And this is where, like, the MBBF constitution that was just passed and MBBF um, uh, uh, rules and regulations, you know, we have to create templates to make sure that sustainable beyond our tenure. We have to create um systems of operations so that it's more it's more easier for anybody so it's a it's a, it's a level playing field for anybody that wants to come in but me and you understand that the, we even knew that in the news industry running a business in nigeria i run alpha sports too is not for the faint of heart but definitely a high return and nigeria is one of the biggest and still one of the biggest markets in africa and we have to do everything we can to create that enabling environment and sustainability beyond us so that people see it as an opportunity okay i'll tell you one thing that you and i are very agreed on Ugo, is the fact that we believe that government can do everything so we need to step in there and, and create the circumstances that we need to create 
to our own circumstances to make sports um, successful. And I feel that the more private investors uh, get into sport, the more success they do, they, they achieve, the more government is beginning, would begin to fall in line and give, provide um, the sort of environment that they need. But just before we go on the break, I'm going to ask you uh, this one question, because I think it's very, very important. And I think it's something that's a bit uh, of a challenge to most uh, federations in Nigeria. What's your focus uh, from the marketing point of view? You know, um, in building basketball in Nigeria, what's your focus today? Is it building a successful league? or building a su successful national team or successful national teams. I ask this because, you know, commercially, it's the domestic competitions that bring in the money. So what's your focus? Well, I think both are symbiotic mm. because um, a successful national team shines a, a bright light on the, on, on the local space okay. and also helps... Um, bring other opportunities. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, our local space is the most important mm. and 100% behind pushing for local endeavor. I know it's challenging. I know that's where we have to roll up our sleeves. Yeah. And I know that is where um, it's not the lowest hanging fruit because of the mindset of people. There are so much entitlement and expectation from people that just you know, the basketball or the sports industry in the grassroots has been, for the past 50 years, has been about, oh, I'm, I've coached for 50 years, I should be the coach of the team forever. Yeah. Um, and uh, everybody has expectation. I think the mindset has to be changed. And I think, secondly, we have to roll up our sleeves and create that. I'm, I'm not a big believer of the Federation running basketball leagues. I'm not a big believer because it's been the same template for the past 50 years and you can't keep doing the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and expecting a different result. Even sponsors don't want to, you know, sponsors, um, sponsors are not endeared to federations. But like I said, when did the ABL, we had over 20 sponsors. Mm -hmm. For some reason, they trust private because the federations are run by bureaucrats. Mm -hmm. In my own federation, there are people that don't even know about basketball. If you ask them my one question about basketball, they don't even understand, which I'm not trying to blame them. They were put in that position. You have to have people that have passion. You have to have people that spend their own money, not sitting down waiting to travel to go get extra codes or, mm. you know, the whole system has to change mm. completely, in my own opinion. Okay. But the focus should be on the grassroots. The focus should be on the national teams, not just because of let's go and play basketball. But because of the economic opportunity to generate, mm. because of the jobs it will generate, because of the whole ecological system, if well nurtured, will actually add value to our national concept, mm. our national values, our national, um, our, 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 our economic opportunities as a nation. Mm. You know, in some countries like the United States, the NBA generates over ten billion dollars a year. Yeah. In sports alone, I heard the value is over almost reaching to a trillion now. Imagine if we can do that in Nigeria, where we have all the human capital. We have the best players, we have the best resources. If we can improve improve, improve our infrastructure. Look at what um, uh, Tayo Amoshu and his wife and Tunde Falao are doing, building a basketball uh, a sports arena in Lagos. Mm. That's private enterprise. Mm. You know, look at what the NBA and Wemi and Abudu or uh, Musa Kida on his own capacity is doing across, across everywhere. So I think those are opportunities for us to grow the game. And we have to be more deliberate. I think for me, I agree that the national space is what we need to grow. And not just for this game of basketball. And this is not just about basketball. This is all sports. Yeah. Even in the United States, you see people, there's a commercial opportunity from golf. There's a commercial opportunity from a 1K races. So we need to use sports and grow our economy. Some of us are in sports, must, be in, must find ways to find a way to add value to our national space, not just for our generation, for the next generation as a template. Absolutely. So it's easier for them to recognize and understand these values moving forward. Mm. Excellently put, um, Ugo. Uh, we're going to go on a short break now. When we return, we're going to be talking more basketball. Now, I'm going to talk 
to you about um, the MBBF leadership, you know, um, and how this affects, you know, um, potential sponsors and investors. Uh, we hear that, um, you know, years of squabbles have now finally been put to rest. Is that the case? What can we expect going forward, especially as the leadership um, um, elections are, are just around the corner relatively? You know, so I'm going to be talking to you about that. I'm going to be talk because whatever is going to happen afterwards is, is uh, highly going to be determinant, uh, you know, as to what sort of future we can ex expect from basketball in Nigeria. Also, when we return, you're going to be talking to us a bit more about what you do as an entrepreneur in the, in the, in the sports space. All right? So thanks uh, again uh, for, for honoring the invitation. And you're watching Plus TV Africa. Uh, we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Islands, Island, Lagos. The program is Sports Business with Oru for Ezaga. We're going to go on a short break, and when we return, the business continues. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Oru Ezaga. You're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. We're talking about basketball in Nigeria. And we're talking about uh, we're talking to a highly resourceful um, guest today, uh, Mr. Ugo Udezwe. He he's been an ex-international for Nigeria. He's the man. He's the CEO of Afa Sports, uh, producers of sports kits and um, um, general sports apparel and, and, and um, um, equipment. He's also the chairman of the, of the MBBF Committee on Sponsorships and Marketing. All right. So welcome, to, welcome back to the program, Ugo. Thank you very much. Okay. So I said I was going to ask you about the MBBF leadership. Okay. So we've had, I've had two uh, members of the same board that you are, you are a part of on this program before. I've had the Vice President of the MBBF, uh, Mr. Um, Babs Ogunwade, and I've also had uh, Mr. Sorry, uh, Colonel Samamedu retired on this program. And what both of them have said is that leadership is no longer the problem. Uh, sorry, leadership squabbles are no longer the problem of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. All right? Is it a view you agree with? And um, what can we look forward to in the elections coming in just over a year or so? Um, because the sponsors will be interested. Any sponsor who wants to get in now, or sorry, any sponsor or investor who wants to get in now is thinking, okay, this administration is probably at its end. Um, why don't I wait until the new board is in place before I, you know, I, I discover it's even over in the first place? You know, so w w what can we realistically uh, make of this situation as it is today? Um, I agree and understand your point. Mm. And if I was a sponsor, I would feel the same way. Mm. That is why I always advocate for private enterprise. Mm. Because as it is today, the MBBF family, unfortunately, even in your own family, there's disagreement. Yeah. There's always questioning of leadership in everything that you do. We, we question our president, MBBF president, Nigerian president. But as a member of a committee, as a member of the federation, personally, my job is to support the president of the Nigerian Basketball Federation, who is duly elected, and do everything I can in my power to support his ideas, programs, and everything he's doing, okay. whether I disagree with it or not. Mm. You know, um, the problem people perceive as the Nigerian Basketball Federation, there are people that have been in these federations for the past 30 years. They've been consistently in every federation of Nigerian basketball for the past 30 years. And when people disagree with them, there's an issue. Whatever issue, let's make this very clear. This is mostly what's happening in our federation, too, is very personal. It's between two individuals. And I've said, and, and I've said so much, and I don't know if it's between two individuals or one individual having a, having a, having a problem with somebody, with one person. And this thing does not have to exist in this space. And I've said it, and you don't have to be part of the Federation to impact basketball. Mm. 
I just joined you. This is my third year or my second year of being a member of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. I've been impacting basketball for many years without being a member of the Federation. I don't need the Federation platform to impact basketball. Mm. The Southeast Zone asked me to represent them in the Federation. That's why I agreed to be on the NBBF board. Mm. But the board does not give me any platform in any way to impact basketball. Mm. So people that are in the Federation that are squabbling or whatever their issues are, should take it outside the Federation. Still keep working on basketball. Some of these people cannot do anything outside the confines or concept of government, inside mm. their bureaucrats. Mm. You know, it's about control and power, which is so annoying. And, mm. most, and the most annoying part is some of these people are people we grew up looking up to. Mm. So in my own view, most of them should just get out, clear out of the way. So people that have good ideas, young people can come and change the whole concept of the game. Mm. You know, this, this needs to stop. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's embarrassing. For mm. no reason, there are people that will find that if somebody goes left. There is, a, is you know, for some, for example, Rina Wakama when she was elected, as when she was selected to be the head coach, coach of the Nigerian women's team, mm. a woman that at 32 years old, 33 years old, has been so successful more than any basketball coach in Nigeria in a long time. The same people were against her. They fought massively. They went to the media and said she was too young, she's a woman, and look at how successful she is now. And nobody's saying anything. Okay. So if you keep listening to the ideas and the, 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 the narratives of these people, I always say, take this out of the board, take this out of basketball. If you have an issue with someone, go and deal with it somewhere else. Even if you want to deal with it here, there has to be decorum and how you want to do it. You know, even all the nonsense that happened in the past two years whether it's a women's team having issues or going on these are people that instigate them they both deliberately sabotage the game of basketball and one of them you mentioned here was one of the people that called me threatening me to stop the abl and the cbl the same person that will come out and shout there's no basketball league in nigeria so the oxymoron does not make any sense so i don't understand where they're coming from this same person called me on the phone and threatened me for, and I said, excuse me, sir, why do you want me to stop the CBL? And he said, I'm just warning you. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Are you are you okay in your head? This is the same person that's advocating and saying there's no local league. If he didn't do everything he can to scuttle the CBL, we will be talking about it now. So sometimes me, myself, I'm mystified because I don't like to operate in those kind of spaces. I believe in progress. I believe in moving forward, regardless of if you like me or not. Basketball is an important concept of our society, not just, again, not just because of the game, but because it teaches our kids teamwork from day one. It teaches us that, oh, this person is a good rebounder, I'm a good shooter. He's leaving people in their spaces. If you, my son is a five-year-old, he plays basketball. You know, after, I mean, he's not playing basketball because I want him to go to the NBA tomorrow. He's playing basketball, but he's learning about yeah. leadership. Yeah. He's learning about teamwork. He's yeah. learning so much stuff as a young man without the real life situation on the basketball court. So this is something we have to advocate because it builds a better society for our country. It builds a better society all around. If we just add a little value from our own perspective, I, th I think it's a bit ironic that um, we preach about the values that um, basketball, uh, sorry, sports brings to a society. Values like collaboration, values like mutual respect, values like um, resilience. Um, if you lose today, you can bounce back tomorrow. You know, values of, 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 of um, discipline and, and focus and all of that. Yet, when it comes to our are managing the game itself. We don't call. We don't like to collaborate. We don't. Uh, we don't take. Um, we take things personal. We don't. We don't want to be on the losing. What losing in quotes? We don't want to be on the losing end. We don't. We don't have the patience to wait and say, look, even if I've lost today, I can bounce back tomorrow and win. You know. So it, it's a bit of an irony and, and it's a sad one. But no, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very ironic. Yeah. Let, let me also give you another example. I, I, I was leader of the delegation for the under-18 team that went to South Africa. Okay. I get a lot of calls or people, oh, you have to put this person on the team, you have to use this coach, you have to mm -hmm. use that. And, I'm, and I always ask them this question. 
are you guys trying to win or lose? We have to get the best players. I don't care if they're from one section of the society or from one section of the country. Mm. We need to get the best of the best, the yeah. best coaches. Yeah. But you have to be, you have to be resilient and strong. And thanks for the uh, MBBA Federation President Musa Kida for giving me that capacity because he himself does not care about all that. Mm. We have to, and I have to be courageous to tell them no. I have to be courageous to tell them this is not the direction I'm going. We're here to win for Nigeria. And yeah. I do not care. I don't even know some of the players' names. Yeah. I just watch and see what they're doing and we're going to get the best players. But you'll be surprised at every level, there's always self-interest. There's always personal interest above country. Yeah. There's always political interest above country. And that needs to stop. And I see that in football. Our football used to be one of the best in the world, but a lot of interest and personal interest has taken over the game. We always have to get the best because when the best wins, it comes to us. Basketball is the basketball is the great equalizer. I mean, sports in general is the great yeah, equalizer yeah. because you can't cheat sports. If your kid cannot go and say, "I'm going to cheat and in running a hundred meters." It's there for everybody to see. It's mm. a great equalizer. My father is rich. Doesn't mean I should make the team. Absolutely. If he cannot play, it's very obvious for everybody to play. Yeah. So I call sports as a great equalizer in our society. Okay. So we have to make sure that from beginning, we're getting people involved in sports because it really helps the mindset and the cons. That's why you come to the United States, you have YMCAs, you have a lot of sports leagues. My son started playing basketball at three. At three years old, he will know that this person is already doing this and I'm doing this, I'm the scorer, I'm the rebounder. That teaches them even in life that we are all different mm. from an early age. Mm. You don't have to be envious of someone because he's doing well here. You can be doing well somewhere else. This mm. is real life that we're trying to replicate as a grassroots level. Okay, yeah. Uh, the great lesson. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you an experience I had once and um, you know, it's what you have said about your son you know and you know how we're different but how we're different in a good way if we then you know um sort of like um collaborate and so my area of weakness is your area of strength your area of strength is my area of weakness when we come we have a symbiotic <laughs> relationship that produces a third alternative that's better than what you and i can do and i'll tell you this you know we're talking about problem solving skills for young people i went to watch a, a swimming competition uh, at the National Stadium in Tuileri. And then I saw this young boy. Uh, he couldn't have been more than 12 years old. He was with his father and his sister. He was a swimmer. The sister was a swimmer as well. The sister was probably like 10. And he was telling the father how they, were, they should run the relay race. And he was saying, I'm the fastest. Maybe I should start. And so and so is not so fast. Maybe you should do the third leg or the second leg. Just, and I was amazed. I mean, here was a, a, a 12 year old boy already thinking in such, in such advanced ways. And this is what sports can bring, bring to societies. And this is why progressive civilizations integrate sports into their, their societies and their cultures. You know, one of the examples I use for people, and I say, I say to them that. You're in the United States, Ugo, you, so you should know. Imagine the United States without the NBA, without NFL, without um, NHL, <laughs> without... It's Indiana, not the United States. Without, <laughs> where United States would you have left? Because that's the country that we are today in Nigeria. Imagine if we had that in Nigeria. Yeah. You know, growing up, I still remember the Rangers. You yeah. know, I still remember... Um, Ben I still remember, uh, ah, shooting, shooting stars. stars. Yeah. You know, the, 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 those were actually communities. Mm. You know, they were not just sports teams. They mm. were lifestyles. They were, you know, people felt like being part of something was great. And mm. we need to recreate that in Nigeria again. Yeah, yeah. We need to build that from a whole different perspective. 100%. Okay, so we're going to have to quickly. So, because I still want to talk to you about Alpha Sports. Yeah, so that other people can see the, that opportunities in sports just don't have to be when you're an athlete. Um, but before I do that, let me just ask you this final question as it concerns uh, basketball and how we want to, to grow it in Nigeria. And the question is, unlike football, yeah, where you have Rangers, you just mentioned uh, Rangers, you just mentioned um, shooting stars, 
and uh, Bernal Insurance I mentioned, that's my club by the way. Uh, the, 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 po the point is, we don't have enduring, enduring brands in basketball. What do I mean? You could probably, you had customs, are they still playing? You had Dodan Barracks, uh, sorry, Dodan Warriors, are they still playing? You have all of those. So do you, how do, what do we need to do in basketball to ensure that we have brands such that when, when ownership changes or, you know, the brands remain, you know, the way they do in the United States and in much of, of um, the, Western, the Western world, why don't you name these clubs uh, you know, after maybe communities like you talked about, after states like, like Lagos? So the day you are tired and you want to leave, some other person just takes over from you. The ownership changes, the brand remains. Yeah, that's a very good one. Um, first of all, the whole concept of sports is making people feel they're part of something. Yeah. They own part of something. Mm. When I see people, first of all, name a soccer team after their after their person, or a basketball team after their person, I immediately know they've lost the underlying factors mm. when it comes to sports ownership and enterprise. Mm. Because when it's your person, that means if you if you get deceased tomorrow, that's the end of that enterprise. Yeah. And this goes across all businesses, not just sports. That is why, as black people, when you grow a business and something happens to you, that's the end of the business. Yeah. And then somebody has to start all over again to yeah. build it to where you yeah. built it. You know, my Cuban could have named Dallas Mavericks, my Cuban Mavericks, right? Mm. But he's smart. You know, he, he, he built Naked as an enterprise. You know, last one of the focus at Alpha Sports. Alpha Sports has to exist beyond myself, not just because I want to give it to my son or my partners want to give it to their son. We have to create the business where 50 years from now is still the Nike in Nigeria, mm. providing not just because of the money is bringing in, but the opportunities and symbiotic opportunities is creating in the communities. Mm. So even in sports branding and sports naming, if you own a team, I always advocate when I hear people, maybe the damn warriors I understand because it's a locale and warriors, but mm. imagine if you name teams Abuja Senators, mm. Abuja Rocks, mm. you know, and instead of having a personal name to a team or even the whole basketball league, I could have named the CBL Ugo Desway Basketball League. Mm. Uh, if, imagine if something hap uh, has happened to me or maybe I get arrested tomorrow or there's an issue or there's an issue, what happens after that? Yeah. Okay, Ugo, so... You, you, you understand? Yeah, I know. Ugo, so we have, we have just about um, five minutes left on the program, and I want to talk about, about um, Alpha Sports. I see you do some really cool stuff. Um, you, you brand the, the, the Tigress, you brand the national teams, or you kit the national teams. Uh, you also do the same for the Cameroonian uh, national team. And then there are lifestyle products that you have that uh, we have a few of those pictures, you know, so um, where you have um, um, uh, the Alpha Sports um, um, products, you know. So tell me, what, what, what's Alpha Sports into and, and, and what inspired the whole business idea? So when I came to Nigeria um, in 2015, I looked at the space uh, when we started the ABL. Um, I noticed that I tried to get Nike involved in what we're doing, but they said they didn't have they didn't have uh, they didn't look at Nigeria as a marketplace. Then I went to the markets. I went to trade fair in uh, on the mainland, and I understood. And I spent about two months there looking at the different opportunities. And I was like, "Wow, this is a good industry." But we're not just gonna buy and sell. We're gonna create a brand because I understood that brand was essential to the growth of basketball. Like, if you have a brand that is symbiotic with the society, or, you know, culturally entwined, that we will have to do something that was, uh, uh, that was viable. 
So I started thinking about it, Africa, Africa for Africa, and we decided to create a brand that will be sustainable in the in the long in the long run. We actually build this block by block. We didn't even understand the market. I remember sitting in the some uh, malls just to watch some of the sports products being sold, how they're being sold. So we actually we had no ideas of the warehousing, inventory management, store management. We build this painstakingly block by block, not just for anything, but to create opportunities. 99% of our products are made in Nigeria. And basketball is not just our only focus. We ship to diaspora, we ship to over 20 countries. We, we, we sell across Africa as much as we can. And we do, we are trying to do everything we can uh, against all odds to build a, and a commercially, not just for basketball. We also have done stuff with volleyball, tennis, and some golf, and some other sports industries in Nigeria. So our goal is to be a premier sports brand that will also incentivize the local basketball programs and find a way to commercially um, be enterprising enough as a lucrative uh, sports business. And to compete, uh, you know, with the international brands, because once sports picks up in this country, the Nikes will step in and, and pay these teams a lot of money to, to, to keep them. You know, how, how, how do you see yourself competing in that, in that sort of space? Do you pay the national teams now or you just basically keep them? Um, you know, no, so we, how, we how do you intend so to never, compete? We never received the penny. We right? never received the penny from the MBBF. We never okay. received the penny from any federation we did volleyball we didn't really, we've done a lot we've not received a penny from the cameroonian but what our goal is to push sports in africa okay we've, you know i've had rumors people saying we we design our products in nigeria we have our designers we have our ideas that's why our brand has become sustainable we are not we're not here to look for hand me outs mm. you know our brand on its own in the afro um space is completely excellent mm. so um our goal is to we are hitting the national teams if we we'll be happy for nike to come mm. actually as a chairman or as the chairman of the sponsorship committee reached out to nike to keep the national women's team even after this olympics okay. i have a text message from the the head of nike global saying that declining to keep nigerians women team because of what the past administration did with peak she, she said clearly Peak, um, the past administration, there was no decorum and no protocol when they removed them as sponsors of the Nigerian team and brought in Peak. So they would, they are not interested in doing anything with Nigeria in the present or in the near future. Oh, wow. Um, we tried to work with Adidas. We gave them an opportunity to keep the women before they walk up. I see how the, the, the communication with them and they declined. So it's not that Alpha Sports is just sitting there waiting to. We came into the Olympics after all these people have declined. And we even asked our fellow board members, do you have any opportunities? Some of these people, if anybody comes up with a kitting plan, that is, we'd be very happy. We are excited for Nike to come back. We're excited because the market is so big. Yeah. As far as it's helping the economy, for us, the only difference is Nike is going to take that money back to the U.S. We want to make sure all our resources are there in Nigeria. Okay. All right, Ugo, it's been, it's been absolutely brilliant having you on this program today. Um, as you would know, there's still a whole lot we need to talk about. I always say this to my guests because the sports industry is so huge, so deep that we haven't even, we're just beginning, we haven't, we're just scratching the surface of what needs to be done, all right? I hope to engage with you again later to continue our interactions and our education of society on the importance of the sports industry. Thank you for, for, for honoring Thank me. you very much. Okay. Now, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you too. Yeah, so, um, and that's it, viewers. Uh, join us again next week for another exciting um, package. And until we do, um, here's me say, wishing you to be productive, to, to stay safe, and to be good.